guys, when you go here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to set up the Elgato Game Capture HD for your PC for use with live streaming and game capture. So I'll move on over to the setup now and show you guys just what you need to get started. So the first thing you'll need is a Game Capture HD card from Elgato, a laptop, I'm using the Acer Spire 5732Z, and a gaming computer. You want to plug in the uh, HDMI cable out from your PC into the HDMI in on the Elgato. And then on the opposite side, you want to plug in the HDMI cable into the HDMI out and lead this into your TV. And then you want to plug in the USB port into your laptop. So once you've got your setup complete, it should look a little like this with the gaming computer and laptop set up. Uh, just a quick note, you won't be able to see the um, computer screen until you've turned on the Elgato software on your laptop. Uh, this is so that it can um, pass through the Elgato game capture in your HDMI television. So I'm going to move over to the um, screen recorder now for the laptop so that you guys can see the software a bit clearer and I'll do a quick overview of the software and tell you guys all of the features you need to know for live streaming and recording. So when opening the Elgato Game Capture software you'll be presented with the um, preview window here on the left and also the options window on the right. Um, to get into the preferences you click on the gear symbol up here on the top which we're going to look on now. So this is the Elgato Game Capture HD preferences. You're able to change the file location for where you save your videos here by clicking on either the change button or the reset button to reset it back to default. And also you're able to enable flashback recording. Now what flashback recording is, is basically from when you open the program, it will keep a record or a timeline of everything that's happened. So you're able to skip back and start recording at any point. This is useful for games such as Call of Duty, where you might want to um, skip back and record a round that you were just playing um, if you happen to pull off something awesome. However, for live streaming, I'd recommend that you disable this option unless you have like a beastie computer or something because um, it does take up a lot of processing power keeping this uh, timeline running or keeping the flashback uh, recording option on. The next setting I want to look into is um, the show device settings, which basically will allow you to change what type of input device you have. I use the Xbox 360 input device, even though I'm playing on PC, as basically this records at the same quality as the other option, which would be the only other type you could select for using a PC input. Um, this just means that I can switch between the two easily. Um, we're using a HDMI input here, so we'll have HDMI selected. And also the color range is just set as standard. And the profile is set as HD720. Um, standard definition on this setting is 480p, but we'll be using 720p for our recordings. Uh, the good, better, and best quality is basically the quality of the um, actual recording. Having it down in the lower end will mean that um, you'll, you'll see it's a bit more pixelated maybe, or the quality is slightly less than um, obviously on the best quality. Um, if your laptop's not able to run it, then you might want to change that. Um, if you notice that your screen isn't on the left hand side or it's frozen for some reason, you can always drop the quality down and then back up to best. And this will basically refresh the um, Elgato and it will catch latch back onto the signal. So yeah, I keep this on best as I want the best recording quality from all of my um, footage that I take. The next option here is the game audio. Basically this allows you to increase or decrease the decibels at which the game audio will come through. Um, for Xbox 360 users, this is usually the party chat and also um, other people talking such as on Skype or TeamSpeak. Uh, so I keep like to keep this on a lower setting as I can obviously increase or decrease the game audio in the actual game to make my um, party members a bit louder on the commentaries. So the next setting is for live commentaries. To start, you click on the live commentary icon here. Um, you also select your microphone by selecting uh, the little input tab here, which will allow you to select, for example, the Yeti, Yeti stereo mic, which I'm using at the moment. If you can't see your microphone in this um, options, you can go down and right click on your Windows sound uh, icon down here in the bottom right, where you can look at your playback devices or recording devices, just to make sure that they're installed correctly. As with the game audio, you're able to change the decibels of your microphone so that it's louder or quieter. And the next feature is the automatically reduced game sound or ducking as it's referred to. This allows you to automatically lower the volume of the game whenever you speak through your microphone. You can change the threshold and attenuation by clicking on the little tool icon there. And oh, oh one quick thing, you need to click on the um, microphone icon on the live commentary. It'll go green and you'll see obviously your levels bar here which shows the volume of your voice coming through um, so know that it's working. So the next new feature for Elgato is the live streaming. This um, if you want to live stream PC is very very useful as it means that on this setup you won't be using up any of your um, uh, processing power of your main computer so there'll be no lagging games so you can perform as best as possible. 
And basically the first thing you want to do is create an account on Twitch TV. I know that there's plans to use XSplit for other sites such as YouTube and Livestream.com in future. So keep an eye out for that on my channel and I'll be running some uh, tutorials on how to use XSplit with uh, the Elgato Game Capture Card. So to add a new account you can just click on the account tab here um, which will allow you to choose from the multiple accounts that you might have for Twitch TV. Um, you can also click the plus or minus to add or remove an account. This will take you to a little browser form which will allow you to sign up or log in to twitch.tv to connect the account. Um, you can also click on the server. It's recommended that you pick the server with the lowest ping. For example, for me it's London UK Secondary. Um, this will um, basically pick the closest server to you which will give you the best connection. Um, you can select a status message which will allow you to um, change the title of the stream. And one of the next features which is also one of the most important is the uh, bitrate. Basically this is used for your live streams to um, sort of set an upload speed for your maximum allowed by your internet connection. Um, to test this you can go to sites such as speedtest.net or another speed test website. There'll be a link in the description for you to do that now. Um, basically you want to set the megabytes per second and also the resolution to a um, quality amount, uh, to a feasible amount what you'll actually be able to get out of your internet. So for example I have um, 3 to 4 megabytes upload speed so I've set my stream at uh, 2 megabytes per second at 720p. This um, allows me to give a good quality stream out to people. You can also change the maximum resolution types, for example, lowering it to 480p but still streaming out at 2 megabytes per second. Um, you'll notice that when I drag the slider there, the um, resolution automatically changes on its own. This is to basically suit to the what um, Elgato basically think is the best uh, resolution speed to use for their software. Uh, yeah, so basically that's all you need to know about streaming through um, the Elgato software. One of the very last things here is the tags. This basically allows you to set up some of the file information for finding the correct video file easier, such as the title, game, and description. So that's basically all you need to know for live streaming and recording on the Elgato. Um, if you guys found this tutorial useful, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll try to answer every question that's posted. If you want to take part in events on the Xbox 360 and PC, follow me on Twitter or Facebook, and also twitch.tv for live streams. Uh, there's links in the description that you can click. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys later.